Well, today on Nation and Window Cleaning Podcast, you're going to be angry because we're talking about window cleaning lies, the things that you were told that are just not true. So get your emails ready to send me lots of angry messages and angry comments on YouTube. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey! If it's your first time here, have a look around. This episode is hopefully going to teach you a thing or two that maybe you didn't know. Uh, but uh, they're not always as passive-aggressive as this episode, I swear. Uh, but have a look around. We have hundreds of episodes to follow. Uh, we've been doing this every single week for 200 plus weeks in a row. So go back, binge everything. By the way, congrats to all of you who have sent me messages saying that your binge is over. You are finally caught up. High five. Literally, that is absolutely rad. Um, there are people who have watched and listened to every single episode that we've done. If it's you who have watched every single episode, comment down below on uh, YouTube and let us know. Brag a little, because that's a ton of content, man. That's like 100 hours of awesomeness. And... Uh, Maybe not 100 hours of awesomeness, but a couple hours of junk in there too, by the way. But either way, thank you so, so stinking much. If you are one of the cool kids, by the way, you uh, got the new cool kid sticker. Look at that. That's the new uh, holographic cool kid sticker. Uh, Douchier than ever, but uh, if you haven't gotten one, that is the new iteration of that. The old one is right there, by the way. Um, It is because of you... The people who let me be your rep. I am a rep with windowcleaner.com. Um, my number is 862-312-2026. Thank you. If you let me put your orders in for you, it really, really does mean a lot. It's the way that I can exist because that is my form of income. It is the only thing that keeps me from living on the streets is you guys letting me put your orders in. Big or small, it doesn't cost you anything extra, of course. Uh, I get credit for it. And yeah, super awesome virtual high five. If you are an ultra epic cool kid, that means you do all that, you've commented on all of them, you've watched all the episodes, you let me put your orders in, Uh, you're collecting your stickers, by the way, post pictures if you got the stickers, but more importantly, not more importantly, as importantly, you are subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine, what's up, thank you. Uh, truly thank you. If you haven't, uh, there is a magazine out there for window cleaners. It is absolutely amazing. This just happens to be the Sorbo issue. There are posters in there, sticker sheets, just cool pictures. By the way, if you have awesome pictures, send us awesome pictures. We print so many pictures in every issue. We are like out of them. So please do send me some awesome pictures. But um, get your subscription. Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get your magazine and become one of the epic, awesome, cool kids. And that's where all these stickers come from, man. All right. Longest intro ever. I'm sorry. Either way, thank you for everything. Uh, But today, we're talking about the top lies in the window cleaning industry. Now, people don't usually get super angry at me. Uh, The last person to get angry at me was uh, a person that you all know. Um, that I am no longer his rep and, uh, he has left everything and, uh, become non-existent in all the groups and forums and everything else. And, uh, he's the last one. I don't get angry people. Usually I've had one other person who, uh, has ever told me that they do not want me as the rep. And that is in like four years of doing this five years. Gosh, it's been longer than that one person. And it's because he said that I sent him the wrong towels but he bought recycled surgical towels and they change. They're always changing different batches, different groups. Anyway, he said that I was trying to scam him somehow by saying, anyway, it doesn't matter. The only person, of course. So most times people aren't mad at me, but if you want to be angry, comment, man, oh man, would it really tell me if you commented on YouTube, (laughs) but there's first a thumbs up or thumbs down the video. Um, but either way, let's start the conversation with that. Uh, All of these things here, there is a lot of debate and there's a lot of fact in a lot of this, but sometimes people just believe what they believe. I've seen it with my own eyes. 
Yeah, something else was coming out about it, but uh, they still believe these. These are lies in the industry. If you believe these, you can keep believing them. I don't care. I'm just some dude with a microphone who's got nothing else to do on a Friday than post these uh, podcasts. But here they are. And by the way, I've had this. I try to queue up like ideas. If you guys ever have ideas for podcasts, send them to my text, that 862-312-2026 number. Be like, podcast idea and shoot them. I search podcast ideas people send me. I have lists of different things, and I have a big list of them where I'm like, oh, God, I can't really pull something out. I can't do... And this is one of those where I'm like, yeah, it's going to make people mad. Let's Let's just start right off with the biggest one, the biggest... One is razors scratch glass. Like, you can't use razors on tempered glass. You've heard that, right? This is like becoming more and more of a, a kind of a, a norm that people just say, oh, you can't. No, no, I heard you can't. You know, you can't. It'll scratch. Why in the world would you think that that's a thing? First off, tempering glass makes glass harder tempering right but the point of it is is still the edge of the blade compared to the hardness of the glass right in hardness scales there are levels right if you take the softest one and the hardest one and you put the two together the hardest will scratch the softest it's just how it happens that's why a diamond the only way to cut a diamond is with a diamond right so if you have something that is not as hard as something else, it cannot scratch it. Now, let me explain. With a razor, if you use it properly, meaning just on the glass sliding, it doesn't have to be wet. It does feel better when it's wet. It slides better. But on the tip of the razor, on the glass, with no fabricating debris, it cannot scratch. As long as there's no rust. Rust makes the metal actually harder than the glass. Rust will scratch glass. The other thing is if you take a razor and you somehow like jab it and you let all that strength go in the blade as opposed to the tip of the blade, then yeah, you could like gouge it if you really wanted to. People always argue that. Oh, I could scratch. Give me a razor. I'd scratch it. <sighs> Used properly, it can't scratch. Now, with tempered glass, there is fabricating debris. There is a lot of just talk about fabricating debris in general. By the way, I'm trying to look at my board if there's a Gary Maurer sticker. God, there's got to be one somewhere. Gary Maurer is absolutely one of the most awesome guys ever. Uh, he is a huge, huge person when it comes to uh, fabricating debris. And uh, Anyway, uh, but fabricating debris means that they have glass that has then been tempered and there's glass fines in there because they have a dirty facility. So just to go in and nerd it real quick. When you bevel an edge, meaning uh, normal edge is square, if you make it so it, it angles, right? Like, <clears throat> excuse me, mirrors, things like that. You're actually grinding off those pieces. That's how glasses cut down. You grind the pieces and it makes dust. The dust is called glass fines. Uh, they're basically slivers of glass, but very, very fine. And what happens is if they're not sucked up, right? So they're in the air and it's just dust. It lands on the glass as the glass is going through the furnace for the tempering process. They can partially melt into the glass. So now they're stuck on the glass, but they stick like this, right? Here's the glass and your glass finds kind of go like this. So smooth glass. And now you have little things that stick up. When you hit them with a razor, it breaks those little pieces off because they're so small. And now your razor blade is holding slizzer, slivers of glass against other glass. And guess what? A diamond cuts a diamond, glass cuts glass. That's where you get glass fine or fabricating debris scratches. Whew. That was a lot more than you probably wanted to know. That only happens on tempered glass. And it doesn't happen on every tempered glass. And let me rephrase that. It just has the possibility to happen on tempered glass. If glass is not tempered, you never went through the tempering process. You can't have glass fines. It's not possible. Okay, because it just didn't go through. So that's, I think, where everything comes in. And then sometimes people will be like, oh, I've got glass. I scratched it all up. What? Glass is not softer than the tip of a razor. So you didn't scratch the glass unless there was fabricating debris or, or there was tint or film on the glass. Now, a tint or film, if it's on the exterior of the glass or the interior of the glass and you're scratching or scraping it, you're going to make little marks in there. You can do that even with 
towels sometimes. Tint, some tints really stuck. Suck some of really, a really awesome. But you can't scratch glass with a razor. If you think I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm wrong in the comments on YouTube. If you're listening to this and you're getting angry, that's awesome. Definitely. Go on YouTube. Tell me why I'm wrong. Razors cannot scratch glass. Just they're not as hard. The tip of it is not as hard. The same thing, by the way, as steel wool four zero steel wool ultra fine bronze wool. Both of those are so fine they actually are soft. If you went and took like a zero steel wool, not four zero, but just zero steel wool, that would scratch glass because it's steel on glass. Steel is harder. The bigger the pieces are, the bigger the grade is the more you can scratch glass. It's like white pads don't scratch glass, but green and red and black pads do, right? You have to get something a little softer than glass, won't scratch glass. Okay, I'm off that. By the way, it's a little windy up here on my high horse. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but people tell me that. Every time I'm on Facebook and somebody goes, what should I do with this? You know, I can't scrape it because it's on tempered glass. I'm like, Glass. I've scraped tempered glass for 15 years. I know everybody else has. They're just like, when you know the science behind it. Anyway, okay, I'm on the next one. Uh, the next lie that uh, people have probably told you or people always argue, and again, send your angry emails to, <laughs> to jersey at windowcleaner.com or tell me them on YouTube. I want like a thousand comments on this video. A thousand. If you think I'm right, tell me I'm right. Just take the time. It takes two seconds to do that. But the next one is ladders are as fast as water fed. Now, let me preface this by saying I sell water fed equipment. So, of course, of course, I love water fed. But I also love ladders. I know that sounds really stupid. I'd rather water fed than be on ladders a thousand times over. I love stack ladders. They're absolutely amazing. They're expensive, but they're amazing, right? But I love water fed and I love water fed not because I sell water fed. I don't care. Truly, if you guys have ever dealt with me as a salesperson, I'm not even a salesperson. I will tell you everything. But when you're like, hey, what about this product? I'm going to tell you the truth. Ask me about Wagtail. Wagtail sucks. Wagtail's vacuum cleaner parts. Anyway, I'm on another thing. Ugh. I got off track. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladders are not as fast as water fed. Now. When people are like, whoa, on ground level, I'd smoke you. Yeah, that's why I said ladders are not as fast as water fed. Let's think about this. To clean a window, you have to scrub the window. With well, a scrubber and squeegee, right? Scrub the window. Put that back. Grab your squeegee. Squeegee the window, right? Put that back. Grab a towel. Detail the window. Now, in that time, I more than likely have maybe, you know, I could maybe be on par if not faster i'm not going to say that because then you guys get even extra angrier but say i can water feed the window just as fast as you can scrub squeegee and detail it right that's fair ground level windows you're doing it about the same speed as you would with a traditional method so if that is all true which a lot of you think it is true then it's the same process same timing right right okay now you have to climb down the ladder you had to climb up the ladder in the first place you climb down the ladder you have to move the ladder now every time you've ever been in a window more than likely you're in some kind of garden or something else and now you have to bring the ladder down even if you don't and you're moving it like hercules you're moving it to the next one you got to reset up the ladder stake the bottom so that it's not going to slide anywhere if you're on asphalt make sure the angles are right if you're doing it properly you have to give your osha stretch right you have everything up there. You set it, make sure the ladder's good. It's stable. Then you climb up the ladder. All of that has to be accounted for. You cannot do the window in the same amount of time that it takes me to do the window with the water fed. I take two steps to the side and I'm cleaning. You have to take two steps to the side, but also take a ladder down, reset the ladder up, go back up the ladder, take the thing, make sure it's set. It will never, ever, ever, ever be as fast as water fed. It just won't. Plus, you got to go on a ladder. Plus, you know something, if I'm on a third floor window cleaning with water fed and I fall, oh my gosh, I might even scrape my knee. I'll get back up and clean. It's not the same on a ladder. There's so many benefits to water fed. The biggest thing is, and this is what people really, really don't like. <sighs> Golly, 
I see even saying this stuff, I know you guys will be angry. But when you see comments of people who are like, do a splash and dashers, you're not a real window cleaner, blah, blah, blah. All that garbage about water fed. You go, oh, you own water fed? No, I don't own water fed. Are you kidding me? So you don't even own it. More than not, it's because they can't either afford it or don't want to pay for it. And that's cool. It's a tool. You don't have to use every tool. It's like an accelerator versus a Ettore Pro Plus Super System right? You don't need one or the other. You don't need to have both. There's nothing wrong with not, but then you can't hate on it. No one goes out there and is like, yeah, Ferraris are stupid. That's the junkiest car ever because they can't afford it. No one says that. They just go, oh, man, that's expensive. I can't afford that. So just be quiet and move on to the next thing. You don't have to have water fed, but don't tell me that you'll smoke me with it. By the way, In all of the years that I had a window cleaning company, there was an open bet. It was a $20 bet, not super fancy, but any employee, person, or anybody that ever came into the company, if they could clean a window faster than me, they got $20. Not one time did anybody ever win. I'm not saying I'm the fastest one. You don't need to tell me you could smoke me because you probably could. I haven't cleaned glass in a while. But the thing is, is that I wasn't a slow window cleaner. So when you tell me you could smoke me, it's not like I'm brand new at all this, right? It just isn't possible. Second floor, not happening. Third floor, really not happening. It just isn't. When you're doing a third floor window compared to a second floor, you have to readjust everything to get the second floor. More of the time, you can't reach. I just drop my pole, I'm good. Like, think about it when people argue. Ladders are not as fast as Waterford. Waterford will always win when it comes to ladders. Again, send your angry comments to Jersey at windowcleaner.com or put it here on YouTube if you're on YouTube. I want a billion comments. By the way, Ryan Fuster, give me your thumbs up, huh? Uh, Another one. Uh, The lie that you've been told is that you should never rag a window. Now, you know who I'm talking about and you know that this has been like the biggest thing in the past, you know, boredom months. But I'm here to tell you there are times that you should rag a window. What? You, you're stupid. You don't... Listen, if I have a door... And it's a Frenchy garage door, right? You get those all the time. I'm not going to have a six foot channel to get my six or six six inch channel and my six inch scrubber. And I'm going to scrub everything and then detail. And then I'm going to pull out my spray foam. I'm going to go spray each window with one little bit. And I'm just going to buff it out with a rag. Now, would I ever do that on all my windows? Full panes? And no, no, because it's not as efficient. It's not going to be as well, and it's not going to be as efficient. But there are times where ragging a window is awesome. Frenchies are it. On interior French windows, I will almost always rag windows. Almost always. Because they're a pain in the butt. Exteriors, I'm water feeding. I'll just float over it. It doesn't matter. Interiors, I will rag a lot. A lot of French windows. Because by the time that you're done slopping the water on, squeegeeing everything off, you got six, nine... 12 frames, whatever you have, all of those frames still have to be detailed. And now you got water that's trying to drip all over, so now you're trying to get into where that like uh, ceiling is. Spray foam. It's a dry buff method, method, and it's really, really just super simple. Sometimes in larger buildings where you run like a car dealership or something like that, I'm going to use just a speed clean kit with some uh, uh, Unger... um, uh, microfiber cleaning pads with some spray foam i'm that's ragging windows with a microfiber pad i'm gonna pad them man don't tell me that it's not awesome because there are always ways if i'm above some car dealer person's desk every car dealership is covered in papers covered in papers i'm not gonna drip one drip on there if i'm using the foam and a pad right So yes, you can rag windows when the time is right. Use all of the tools. It's like you can't use water fed in someone's living room unless you never want to go back there again or in case their living room is in a pool house. Probably not a thing. Yes, you can rag windows. (laughs) Another lie you've been told, and I get this a lot because people in window cleaning want to reinvent the wheel and they want to be chemists for some odd reason, but uh, Dawn leaves residue. Dawn leaves residue. I know. I've seen it with my... Now, let's think about that. How would you possibly think that Dawn leaves residue when the squeegee is pulling the water off the glass? 
The dawn is in the water, encapsulating the dirt. That's obviously how soap works. It's in the water. The water then is squeegeed off. You've removed it. Removed it. How is just the dawn being left on the glass? So your squeegee is pulling all of the water off, which is separating the dawn and letting the dawn be on the glass and somehow be under the squeegee? Doesn't make sense. When you think that dawn leaves residue, you're wrong. Um, again, since you're angry, blah, 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 blah. But dawn does not leave residue. No soaps would leave a residue if you've cleaned it the right way. A soap is an encapsulator. You should have... Uh, in three gallons, like a quarter size, like less soap than you ever. If you got bubbles in your soap, you're using too much soap. It's this bubbles that'll do bleed back, not the soap in the water. If the soap is in the water, it's such slow, low levels, it'll pull out, right? You don't have to be a chemist, and you can if you want. If you want to be the guy that uses uh, Dawn with Glass Gleam 3, Glass Gleam 4, and Winsol Super Slip all together because that's the best way, that's cool, man. High five. You don't have to, though. You can use Just Dawn. Now, I know a lot of you are going, what? I can't use it. It, it. it cooks off too much, too fat. Okay, if you're in a very hot area and you're not flashing your windows, then yeah, you could use a wetting agent. By the way, what is flashing your window? If you hit your window and it starts to steam up right away because it's hot, you just dunk your scrubber or flip your scrubber and then scrub it again after about a second of setting it there. The window's now cooled down enough that your water will stay longer on the window. Try it telling you it's called flashing a window it's a really 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 good uh process um but if you want it to stay on longer cool if you say i can't do it with if i don't even flash a window and i'm using a two-hand method and really really hot windows where the sun is at my back i can still clean like understand that's what you can do now if you want to add anything else and you certainly can ammonia if you're doing insides don't really add ammonia because ammonia can really mess up some uh, stained uh, frames and seals and things like that. Um, but ammonia, uh, high-rise guys use ammonia all the time. And that's because it really cuts through spider webs. They're on the outside. It also smells like butt. Don't use ammonia because it smells awful. But um, if you want to be a chemist, awesome. But don't jump on and tell somebody that Dawn leaves residue. I got in the biggest fight years ago with somebody. Not the biggest fight. But I was like, dude, you doesn't make sense. What are you... What are you talking, like, dishes, people wash their dishes with Dawn, there would be residue on a dish quicker than there would be residue with the water being removed with the squeegee, because the water's not being removed, you're just rinsing it off. I don't know. Anyway, Dawn doesn't leave a residue, either way. Uh, Rubber, uh, the next lie, has to do with rubber, if you know Casper. Uh, Rubber. Uh, Yeah, what's that colored rubber? Or, uh, yeah, I'd like to get rubber on a roll. Rubber does not come colored. It's not 100% rubber. It does not come on a roll. Rubber cannot be extruded. Now, blends can and uh, silicone can, and that is what you get on a roll. It's always not a natural rubber. Natural rubber can only be formed into something. That's why like Black Diamond runs at a 40.5 is their largest. A lot of other brands max out at 36. You can't get rubber larger than 36 inches because that's the biggest that their um, their mold is, basically. Right? By the way, uh, coming out in May? Yes, I think this month. This month's, I can't remember where the article was, but uh, Casper actually did an article that explains rubber. It's super, super awesome in the American Window Cleaner magazine, by the way. Uh, just a little teaser for that. But rubber cannot be colored. So if you say, I really like that red rubber, it's not rubber. Ah, it's rubber. It is rubber. No, no, it's it's a blend. You have to, you can't have rubber be colored. It has to be a blend. So yes, you cannot get rubber on a roll. Um, people said that you can, oh yeah, they make it all the time. You can't, oh, uh, uh, Sorbo used to make rubber on a roll. No, they didn't. You can't. It's not a thing. Anyway, there you go. Rubber's colored or on a roll. Not a thing. Uh, and then another one that, uh, I like to touch on is that, uh, RODI water is not, uh, safe to drink. Now, that's a lie. RODI water can be drinking, drinking, drunken, drunk, drank, whatever, right? Uh, you can totally drink it. But here's the thing. 
there's companies out there. Uh, I believe it's called Zero Water is one of them. But they run under the uh, sync systems that are RODI systems. There are people who have whole house RODI systems. You can totally drink the water. But what that has that your system in your truck or garage or shed or van does not have is that that is a non-potable system. Just meaning that anything could be in there. Bacteria, right? Uh, it could have LGs or spores or whatever. It is not made to drink because of that. Now, if you for some reason drank a gallon of RODI water, you still wouldn't die, but it would pull minerals out of your body. You can die from drinking too much water in general. And what usually happens is mineral depletion. You drink, uh, you know, like runners and things where they're just drinking so much water, they drink like two gallons of water and then go running. They're sweating the salt. They drink it, dilutes everything down. They don't have enough salt or electrolytes basically in their body and they end up going into cardiac arrest basically. And they can die from that. Now, are you going to die from drinking RODI water? No. Is it going to deplete you of minerals? Yes. Uh, if you drank it, it would. But the other thing in it is if you drink RODI water out of your system, you more than likely have tried it. it uh, it's not recommended because you don't know what's in there. But the other thing is, is that you are not quenching your thirst by RODI water. It's the weirdest thing ever. If you haven't done it, I'm not going to tell you to try it. But if you haven't done it, you don't know. If you have, you understand. It's like the Pirates of the Caribbean, the apple thing, right? I can't taste. That's my curse. With RODI water, it'll be 110 degrees out. You're cleaning it so high. You're like, ah. drink some RODI water and you will still be thirsty. Well, the reason is there's nothing in that to be absorbed by your body. Your body doesn't actually kind of gain anything from it. You need the minerals. I would 100% rather drink the discharge water than the pure water. I'm not telling you to drink that either because you still don't know what's in there. But discharge water, all that means is there's more. So if you got 150 TDS coming in, that means your discharge may have 300 TDS. All that means is the, the solids in the water, minerals. It's just really very minerally water. But, again, it is not clean to drink. So don't go and tell people you can't drink RODI water, you will die. Don't get that or you will die. You won't. There's entire systems you can buy that are changing your entire house over to RODI. People then shower with it, drink it, water their plants. It's completely okay. I'm telling you. But, by the way, here are the lies one more time. Razor scratch glass lie. Ladders are faster than water fed. Lie. You shouldn't rag a window. Lie. Dawn leaves residue. Lie. Rubber is uh, colored or I can get rubber on a roll. Lie. And RLDI water isn't safe to drink. Now, are there any other ones that you can think of that are in the industry that people are always talking about and no one calls BS on them? If there are comment on youtube let's get some comments up by the way make sure to thumbs up the video if you're watching on youtube if you're listening come join the conversation just jump on say what's up whatever i just want a bunch of comments uh if you haven't had a chance you're buying window cleaning supplies i know you are you probably don't have a guy i want to be your guy huh i want to be your guy everybody's got like an insurance guy and a tax guy and what about a supplies guy that's me my name is Jersey with windowcleaner.com and my cell phone is 862-312-2026. Now, a couple ways if you ever want to put an order in through me, just throw it all in your cart. Whenever you're shopping, make sure you're logged in. Throw it in your cart and then just text me when you're ready. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I'm going to verify your address. Run it through. You're going to get a super cool sticker. Make sure you bring up the sticker. And uh, yeah, then you become a cool kid. I get some cheddar from it. I don't have to uh, be thrown out on the street, you know. And, uh, yeah, you're going to feel super special for your virtual high five of awesomeness. So make sure to do that. I want to be your guy. Every one of you, every order, it's not a hassle to do. It makes things easier. And, uh, by the way, if you don't want to put everything in your cart, just call me, text me, whatever. I can throw it all in there. Be like, oh, Jersey, I just had a guy. I need uh, a gross rubber sent to this location, a gross rubber sent to this location. That was the text. I put in orders for them all the time. So great. Awesome. I'll have it. Take care of it. Super easy. Right? Let me be your guy. 862-312-2026 is my number. And again, shameless plug for the magazine. If you haven't gotten it, it's American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you're a window cleaner, you will benefit from just the awesomeness 
the, their stories and uh, ads and new equipment and stickers, the sticker sheet in every single episode. Plus, we got cool things like this. This is a poster, actually, from Giano. But uh, Giano sends in a ton of stuff. Uh, he is not in America, but sends some good stuff. So that's the issue. Also, back issues and sticker sheets are all available at awcmag.com. A-W-C-M-A-G. Cool. So go out there and uh, hopefully you're not the one uh, passing any of these lies. But either way, go out there and be epic.